Hello, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. Fresh allegations have emerged following the defection of four Bursatu MPs who are now backing Anwar Ibrahim. The party's youth chief has named two individuals responsible for the sudden moves. The Bursatu youth chief says that two individuals are responsible for attracting the support of opposition MPs to Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. One Ahmad Faisal, one Ahmad Kamal claimed that videos related to the efforts can be seen through social media such as Facebook and TikTok. He alleged that the individuals involved were a bald individual with the title Dato and Anwar's former political secretary Farhash Wafa Salvador. In a press conference in Parliament today, one Ahmad said a police report was made by Bursatu Youth while a report to the MACC will follow soon, as he urged the authorities to open an investigation. Adalah jelas keempat-empat ahli parlimen tersebut telah didesak, ditekan dan diugut dengan tindakan SPRM jika enggan memberi sokongan. Hal ini jelas merupakan satu salah guna kuasa oleh Perdana Menteri dan satu bentuk rasuah. Perbuatan ini juga menghina peruntukan Perlembagaan Persekutuan berkenaan undang-undang lompat parti dan bercanggah dengan amalan demokrasi. The four Bersatu MPs who pledged support for Anwar are Iskandar Zulkarnain Abdul Khalid, Kuala Kangsa, Suhaili Abdul Rahman, Labuan, Muhammad Azizi Abu Naim, Gua Musang and Zahari Kecik, Jeli. All four said they made the decision for the interest and welfare of the voters in their respective constituencies. Malaysia Kini has not revealed Dato' Botak's identity for now pending his response and the portal is also trying to get Farash's reaction to the claims. In his immediate response to Malaysia Kini, Farhash Wafa denied Wan Faisal's claim and said he's no longer involved in politics. He will also lodge a police report against the Machang MP for claiming that he was involved in enticing opposition MPs to support the government. Meanwhile, three of the four Bersatu MPs who are now backing Anwar have been moved to different seats in the Dewan Rakyat. Three out of the four Bersatu MPs who switched their support to back Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim have been moved in the Dewan Rakyat. They are now located behind the seat of Muar MP, Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman, whose party Muda withdrew support for the unity government in September. Last week, Dewan Rakyat Speaker Johari Abdul said he had received letters on the matter from all four Bersatu MPs who applied to change their seating place. Johari said he would look at the setup of the August House before making a decision. The four Bersatu MPs who pledged support for Anwar are Iskandar Zulkarnain Abdul Khalid, Suhali Abdul Rahman, Muhammad Azizi Abu Naim and Zahari Kechi. However, Kuala Kang says Iskandar Zulkarnain is still in the same seat. Meanwhile, PN's Shaidan Kasim attempted to raise the matter in Parliament and said he was disturbed by this move. Dia menyatakan sokongan, tapi kenapa dipindahkan kerusi? Kalau pindahkan kerusi, dia berhenti teruslah. Tapi kalau dia pindahkan kerusi, cuma nanti nanti ada 10 orang datang masuk kerusi mana lagi. Jadi kita tak boleh buat macam ni. Mereka mesti berada di tempat itu. Arau, dia yang minta tukar itu lah, Arau. Moving on to the next story. In the latest development of the DAP family conspiracy claim, Siti Mastura Muhammad was called for questioning by police this morning. The Kepala Batas MP, however, stood by her claim and will leave it to the authorities to investigate. Kepala Batas MP Siti Mastura Muhammad has handed over reference material on her claim of a family conspiracy in DAP to police. Earlier, Siti Mastura had turned up for questioning over her allegations that DAP advisor Lim Kit Siang and his son Guan Eng were related to former Singapore Premier Lee Kuan Yew and former Communist leader Chin Peng. The past lawmaker also claimed that several DAP leaders had family ties with each other. Kita juga telah bagi bahan-bahan uh, rujukan uh, ucapan tersebut kepada pihak polis untuk buat siasatan lah. Uh, saya percaya pihak polis sekarang uh, akan buat siasatan lanjut uh, dan sekiranya perlu kita akan bantu siasatan dan uh, kita serahkan kepada pihak polis untuk selesaikan uh, siasatan dan uh, rujuk kepada pihak Timbalan Pendakwa Raya di Jabatan Pembangunan Negara. While speaking to reporters afterwards, Siti Mastura tried to refocus the attention back on Guan Eng. Uh, kalau berkait dengan isu saya, ini adalah berkenaan dengan isu 3A. So, saya cuma tertanya-tanya lah uh, berkenaan dengan isu Wabi Bagan juga sebelum ini untuk PRK di uh, Kedah, kalau tak salah saya, bulan Julai. Uh, berkenaan dengan isu 3A juga berkenaan dengan Tokong dan juga uh, Kuil. So, saya tertanya-tanya juga apa status 
siasatan ataupun perkenaan dengan perkara tersebut. Meanwhile, her lawyer Amza said they have also received four letters of demand from DAP leaders, namely Kit Siang, Guan Eng, Guan Eng's wife Betty Chiu, and Seputih MP Teresa Kwok. Previously, Siti Mastura had alleged that Kwok and Chiu were also related. Donate to Kini TV to show your support and help us sustain as an independent online news portal that delivers breaking news. Do support us. Your contribution matters. I used them and they used me. That's what former Premier Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said on his previous alliance with DAP. Mahathir also acknowledges that both parties had a common aim in GE14. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has claimed that he and DAP were merely using each other in 2018 to topple the Najib Raza administration. In the latest episode of the Keluar Sekejap podcast, Mahathir defended his alleged inconsistency by working with DAP to achieve a majority in the 14th general election. Apabila kita berjuang, the enemy of your enemy is your friend. <laughs> kita nak guna DAP umpamanya nak dapat majoriti. Kalau saya tak guna DAP, kita tak akan dapat majoriti dan Najib akan terus jadi Perdana Menteri. Antara DAP dengan Najib, yang mana satu yang perlu kita uh, singkirkan dan lawan. Sebab itu saya nak guna DAP. Dan saya sudah. DAP juga nak guna saya pasal DAP juga mempunyai matlamat yang sama. Nak jatuhkan jadi kita guna itu. Earlier, Keluar Sekejap co-host Cheryl Hamdan questioned the former Prime Minister's opinion that Anwar Ibrahim had become inconsistent in his stand since being made Premier. Cheryl pointed out that Mahathir had been a staunch critic of DAP as well as PAS, whom the latter is now closely affiliated with. Mahathir, who is the former chairman of Bersatu and Pejuang, is now the informal advisor of the four PAS-led state governments, Kedah, Terengganu, Kelantan and Perlis. Dr. Mahathir's confession proves that he was never sincere in collaborating with the party, said Anthony Loke. According to the DAP Secretary General, this contradicts with the party's intention to cooperate with the former Prime Minister at that time. DAP Secretary General Anthony Loke says the past cooperation with Dr. Mahathir Mohamad was sincere. Speaking to reporters today, Loke said the cooperation was driven by the hope that the nonagenarian had changed and could help bring change. Pada ketika itu, kita amat keras untuk memastikan bahawa ada satu pentadbiran yang baru dalam satu uh, kerajaan yang baru yang boleh membawa pembaharuan. Pada ketika itu, kita mengharapkan bahawa Tun Mahathir selepas pun mencapai satu usia yang begitu lanjut, uh, dia juga boleh berubah. Uh, bukan saja nak uh, sama-sama menumbang, uh, menumbang, menewaskan Najib, tetapi membawa satu pembaharuan. He was responding to Mahathir's statement yesterday that he had used DAP and vice versa to win in polls. However, Lok also revealed that Anwar Ibrahim was at first hesitant on the move. Ketika itu, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim masih berada dalam penjara. Kita juga uh, bertanya pandangan beliau. Uh, malah pada ketika itu, Datuk Sri Anwar pada pada awalnya agak uh, keberatan untuk bekerjasama dengan Mahathir. Dan uh, Datuk Sri Anwar telah pun memberikan pesanan bahawa beliau mengenali Datuk Nur Mahathir. Uh, tetapi akhirnya beliau bersetuju dengan pandangan semua kerana melihat uh, bahawa ada keperluan dari segi strategi dan juga keperluan untuk uh, menggabungkan uh, pengaruh dan kuasa untuk bersatu. Uh, untuk uh, untuk membawa kepada satu kerajaan baru. The Pakatan Harapan government collapsed in 2020 when Bersatu and several PKR leaders defected to form the Perikatan Nasional Government with AMNO, PAS and GPS after the Sheraton move. Mahathir at the time was opposed to Perikatan Nasional but is now working together with the coalition to oppose the Anwar administration. Coming up next, the defamation suit filed by Saifuddin Nasution Ismail against Zuraida Kamaruddin was settled when the former PKR vice president made a public apology to the Home Minister at the Sessions Court this morning. Former Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamaruddin has apologised to Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail as part of a settlement of the latter's defamation suit against her. 
The Kuala Lumpur session Scott recorded a settlement during open court proceedings this morning. In 2020, the PKR Secretary General filed a civil action against Zuraida over allegations linked to the Kelantan government and Tabong Amana Tok Kanali. Meanwhile, Saifuddin at a press conference today said apology clearly shows that the former party vice president had slandered him. Uh, peguam saya, saya tidak menerima nota ini bahawa akhirnya beliau uh, memohon maaf secara terbuka kepada saya. Jelas kenyataan itu yang beliau keluarkan adalah kenyataan fitnah yang tujuannya untuk memudaratkan reputasi pribadi saya sendiri. Dan ini akan menjadi pengajaran kepada semua ahli politik hendaknya. Zuraida was among the leaders aligned to then PKR Deputy President Asmin Ali, who spoke during a gathering on December 8, 2019, at the height of a rift within the party. PKR also succeeded in a separate 10 million ringgit suit against the former Ampang MP over her leaving the party to defect to Bersatu in 2020, which triggered the PHS government's collapse. However, Zuraida is attempting to have the decision quashed before the Court of Appeal. Gagasan Rakyat Sabah will have to start preparations for the next state elections by now. This is after Sabah Chief Minister and GRS Chairperson Hajiji Noor hinted that the polls could be held earlier than planned. Sabah's Chief Minister has hinted at an early state election, possibly before the GRS Pakatan Harpan Plus administration term ends. During the Gagasan Rakyat Sabah AGM in Kota Kinabalu yesterday, Haji Jinur told his party to start preparing although the current term of the administration should end in October 2025. <laughs> bagi menghadapi pilihan rakyat negeri yang akan datang. Walaupun kita masih mempunyai tempo 2 tahun lagi, namun siapa tahu kemungkinan pemilihan raya akan kita awal. In his keynote address, the GRS chairperson called for more political stability, hoping there will not be any more attempts to seize power in the next state election. Citing what happened earlier this year, he labelled the dark episode in Sabah's politics as a deep disappointment as it was orchestrated by a few leaders who were part of the state government. Without naming the leaders or group involved, he said the state government was almost paralysed, adding that political instability could hinder the continuation of the state's previous policies and hamper development. On January this year, Barisan Nasional Sabah Chief Bung Mukhtar Radin withdrew the coalition's support for Hajiji in an attempted political coup. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.